there are very few people in human history who have combined arts and science like Leonardo da Vinci. He was a polymath, a great painter, inventor, sculptor, scientist, and as you will hear, a keen observer of nature and a pioneer in many different things. Leonardo was an Italian polymath who lived between 1452 to 1519. He lived for around 67 years and revolutionized how a human being can observe nature. One of the great aspects of Leonardo is that he recorded his observations as texts which gives us a deep and direct insight into his thinking. Among many things that interested Leonardo was the blue sky. Yes, this blue sky. All of us have been captured by the beauty of the sunlit sky. It has made us gaze and wonder about its color and illumination. Of course, it has inspired a countless number of artists and scientists to ask the question, what is the origin of the colors of a sunlit sky. Leonardo himself was fascinated by this question, which led him to view this question both as a painter and as a scientist. Thanks to the great work of J.P. Richter, who has translated literary works of Leonardo da Vinci into English, yes, his works are now translated into English and are available free online. I'll link them in the show notes. And thanks to this, we obtain a direct peek into the mind of Leonardo, which is an everlasting treasure trove, you see. The more you dig, the more you get out of that. In this particular collected works, what has caught the attention of scientists particularly is the chapter titled Aerial Perspective. In there, Leonardo is trying to converse with his fellow painters on how to create perspective in paintings. While doing so, he makes some vital observations, proposes hypotheses, and further discusses about some experiments to test them. Leonardo, as I mentioned, was a very keen observer. His approach to art was heavily influenced by an analytical way of looking at the problem at hand. In his writings, he appeals to painters to pay close attention to angles and perspectives in geometry. In order to attain precision, he gives elaborate explanation based on his observation. Let me read an excerpt in which he explains how to represent the atmosphere in paintings. Start quote. Why the atmosphere must be represented as a paler towards the lower portion? Because the atmosphere is dense near the earth and the higher it is, the rarer it becomes. When the sun is in the east, if you look towards the west and a little way to the south and north, you will see that this dense atmosphere receives more light from the sun than the rarer because the rays meet with greater resistance. Stop quote. So as you can see, Leonardo is explaining to his fellow painters about how to paint atmosphere. It is remarkable how his efforts to create a painting inspired him to go deeper and hypothesize a physical phenomenon. Now I'll read a few sentences that reveals a connection he makes between color of the sky and the presence of something called as insensible atoms. Remember, we are talking about 1400s to 1500s and he's already talking about something very profound here. I say that the blueness we see in the atmosphere is not intrinsic color but is caused by warm vapor evaporated in minute and insensible atoms on which the solar rays fall, rendering them luminous against the infinite darkness of the fiery sphere which lies beyond and includes it. Stop quote. This is what Leonardo is saying. Although now we know that the light scattering from molecules is uh, the reason for the colorful sky, we need to really appreciate Leonardo's quantum leap of thought in this particular case. 
remember uh, his texts are dated around uh, late 1400s or early 1500s uh, which where the presence of atoms and molecules were not yet verified at all as a person with scientific aptitude leonardo not only hypothesized but also tested them with experiments you see he was a typical scientist now i'll read about uh, his description uh, of an experiment he performed with smoke and precipitation of color arising due to the background i quote leonardo start quote again as an illustration of color of the atmosphere i'll mention the smoke of old and dry wood which as it comes out of chimney appears to turn very blue when seen between the eyes and the dark distance but as it rises and comes between the eye and the bright atmosphere it at once shows of an ash gray color and this happens because it is no longer has darkness beyond it but this bright and luminous space stop quote for me <laughs> this description by leonardo is nothing but a first rate example of looking at nature through a scientific eye and adapting this view as a means to a particular end it is a tribute to leonardo who paid such meticulous attention to details and attempted uh, to explain an unexplained physical phenomena all in the name of getting a painting right <laughs> that's quite remarkable this is also a wonderful example of uh, how aesthetics and science combined in the mind of leonardo which further led to some breathtaking work after all science and arts are two aspects of human expression and leonardo remarkably combined them with great uh, effectiveness there is another lesson we can learn from such endeavors that is observations play a critical role sometimes when a person is working in a laboratory or let's say somebody is just trying to understand something through observations she or he may wonder uh, why one should keep records of one's observation well to them i say uh, look at leonardo he took an important step to write down his observations and this served not only as a template for further exploration but also clarified his thoughts about the phenomena he was interested in and that is also the reason why we are now talking about him writing this way serves two important purpose first is to record the observation at the moment of the exploration second is to see new thoughts and questions that can be derived out of these recordings you can surely get a lot out of this approach and i would strongly urge you to give it a try it's a very effective way of uh, observing nature coming back to the sky so what is exactly the origin of its color why is the sky blue well it took almost 400 years after leonardo's observation for someone to come up with an accurate answer and that person was lord rale and his actual name of course is john william sturt in his uh, remarkable research paper published in 1899 lord rale explained the blue of the sky as due to molecular scattering the opening paragraph of this paper is historic and uh, this is what rale has to say i'll quote his text start quote this subject has been treated in papers published many years ago i resume in order to examine more closely the hitherto the atten- attenuation undergone by the primary light on its passage through a medium containing small particles as dependent upon number and size of the particle closely connected with this is the interesting question whether the light from the sky can be explained by diffraction from molecules of air themselves or whether it is necessary to appeal to suspended particles composed of foreign matter solid or liquid it will appear i think that even in the absence of foreign particles we should still have a blue sky stop quote this is a remarkable statement especially the final statement is significant as it recognizes that light scattering can occur purely due to molecules in air even after discounting the contribution of suspended particles rale gave his famous formula in 1871 which drew an inverse relationship between the intensity of the scattered light from a very small particle 
course, compared to the wavelength of light, and the fourth power of the wavelength of the light. In other words, smaller the wavelength, for example, violet, blue, in case of visible light, more will be the scattering from the molecules in the sky, and hence the blue color. One may wonder, uh, why not violet colored sky? Why should we get a blue color? After all, if the inverse relationship between scattering intensity and the wavelength holds good, then according to visible color distribution, which is a Wibgayer, like all of us know, violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, and red, violet should be the dominant color in the sky. The answer to this puzzle is a complex one, mainly because uh, what we perceive as blue is due to a combination of at least three concomitant effects. One is the Rayleigh scattering, which I just mentioned, the other one is the human perception and thirdly, the background in which the scattered light from molecule is observed. So it's a kind of a complex combination of all these particular effects. Although the color of the sky is beautiful to perceive from Earth, the intricate understanding of the optical processes in the atmosphere of planets, including Earth, is still a work in progress. We don't have complete understanding of that. Thus, the foundations laid by Leonardo opened a new line of thought and Raleigh put forth an important explanation that forms the basis for a majority of studies on light scattering since 1900s. Interestingly, the work of Raleigh also inspired C. V. Raman to ask the question, why is the sea blue? This line of inquiry, of course, took Raman on a completely new intellectual journey which further resulted in what we today call as the famous Raman effect. In the course of future episodes in Pratidwani, I hope to discuss biographies of some of these remarkable scientists and also elaborate uh, their work uh, with some details and references. Meanwhile, I would urge all of you to go outdoors and enjoy watching the sky with your scientific eye. After all, you see, Sky is no limit for science. This is Pratidwani, where we try to humanize science. And this is Pawan signing off, saying bye-bye.